Hey everyone, this is the Into the Future podcast at the University of Mary Hardin Baylor. Our alma mater states, we're ever thankful for our past and into the future we will go. That's why on this podcast, we highlight stories of light from our past to bring hope for the future. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Into the Future podcast. I'm so excited that you have joined us today. If you are watching on YouTube, you can already tell that today is a little different. We are actually having a panel with us to talk about UMHB's longstanding tradition of Easter pageant. We have the current students portraying Mary and Jesus with us, Tori and Dylan, and we have two former Mary and Jesuses, which is Becca Prince and Jeff Sutton. So you guys, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves for the people listening on audio? Hi, my name is Victoria, also known as Tori, um, and I am a junior biology major. Hey everyone, my name is Dylan. I am a senior general studies major. I'm Becca Prince. I graduated in 2018, and I currently serve as director of operations at Helping Hands Ministry. And I am Jeff Sutton, a 2007 and 2019 graduate, um, and I am the Director of Alumni Engagement here at UMHB. Jeff, I am so grateful that you're with us today because not only did you portray Jesus, but you also know so much about our history here at UMHB. Um, so why don't you kick us off with starting with a brief introduction of how Easter Pageant got started, and then maybe a favorite story that you have from alumni. So Easter pageant is one of my favorite traditions, and as director of alumni engagement, I get to work with all of our alumni and hear stories about Easter pageant and kind of help document our history. So um, Easter pageant started with Dr. Singleton, the president of the university at the time. Um, he was looking out his office window and saw what was then the ruins of Luther Hall. Uh, Luther was the first building that was built here in Belton when we moved from Independence. And there, there was a fire and the building burned down. And so there, there was this rubble and these ruins kind of right at the heart of campus. And he looked out his window and said, you know, I have an idea for something that we can do. And he called in Cynthia Sori, one of the professors at that time, and kind of pitched this idea to use our students to tell the story of Jesus and to tell, tell the story of Easter. And so with a $25 budget and this plan, um, the, the Easter pageant started. And um, a very small group of students got together and put it on that first year. And now this year, we're 85 years later, and it's still this great student-run tradition um, that is at the heart of our campus, but is really the heart of who we are as a university as well. Yes, thank you. And when did you portray Jesus? I portrayed Jesus in the 68th Easter pageant, so a little while ago. Yeah, can you tell me a little bit more about that experience? Yeah, so I was involved in the Easter pageant all four years as an undergrad student. Um, my freshman year, I was the first speaking Joseph and got to uh, memorize those lines that I still know today. And then throughout uh, my time, I was Joseph, I was a Roman guard, and then I had the honor of portraying Christ my senior year. And I think all of my experiences with Easter pageant ha have been great and memorable, but that senior year is one that is truly life transforming because um, for the first time, the story of Jesus switches perspectives. So for so much of my life growing up in the church and being involved in ministry, um, we always look at who Jesus is and look at his life and we see the cross. We see him washing feet. And so for the first time in my life, I saw what Jesus saw. And so I saw what it was like to see the people yelling at him. I saw what it was like to look into the eyes of some of my best friends who were portraying these other roles and see just that moment of change, that moment of realization. And so for me, it was one of those things that it's not ju just a tradition. Um, it was this thing that really caused me to grow deeper to Christ. It caused me to really look at what scripture says and to understand who Jesus was and the true sacrifice he made. 
That's awesome. Thank you. Um, Becca, I know that you shared in a devotional reflection of the 2020 Easter pageant that was put on YouTube about the importance of Easter pageant to you. And I know that you portrayed Mary in the 79th Easter pageant. So could you tell us about that experience and why this is so important to you? Yeah, so obviously 2020 was different. So that reflection just gave me an opportunity to look back at my experience and see how different the world was looking, but how the things that I learned during Easter pageant and God were still constant. And so, and the effects in my life now, six years later are still the same. And I still, it hasn't been that long, like two Sundays ago at church, someone said, Oh, Hey, you were married. I'm like, that was a long time ago, but you still remember those things. Um, but for me, my like experience in Easter pageant was a very emotional one. Don't look at me. <laughs> um, I was the crying Mary <laughs> nonstop, nonstop. But I think that kind of allowed me to tap into a side of myself that I don't let out super often. And so getting to experience that, but then also like in the crucifixion scene and the final scene, it's just, and Tori, you'll know this soon enough. Like it's just you maybe one other disciple standing there, but you don't see anything going on behind you. So you hear it, you're hearing all the jeering, all the yelling and these like hateful things. And, but the only thing you have to look at is Christ on the cross. And so that was good for me in a perspective shift, just knowing like I can, that's something I can carry throughout my life is like when I hear all this outside noise, like I can still look up and just see Jesus. And even now, like when I read scripture and I see Jesus's name, like I still picture Matt, who was the Jesus my year, like that's my image of Jesus still. And so it's just a cool connection that you get to keep with you for a really long time. And that is still one of the closest times I've felt to God is during Easter pageant and the weeks following. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, Tori and Dylan, I want to turn to you guys because this experience that Jeff and um, Becca have just talked about is going to happen for you next week. And so can you kind of recap like how this experience started for you um, to choosing your mourners and disciples and then starting practices? Can you just give us a story into that? Yeah, so for me, uh, whenever I got called in, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know there was like a whole process behind even getting to become Mary. Um, I was always just in the audience just watching Easter pageant. So that in my head was never a thought like, oh, like I'm, that's going to happen to me, you know? And so when I got the call, it's kind of a funny story. Um, I'm one to overthink. And so when I got the call from the secretary, I believe, I remember asking her, um, is this a good or a bad thing? And I was just on my way to go study (laughs) for finals. And I had, uh, my boyfriend was in the car with me. And so the phone was on speaker. So he, he heard it. And so we were both like, what's, what's happening? I was like, I don't know what's happening. And, uh, but the time came when I went to go, uh, meet Dr. Rear and he asked me and I remember just sitting there and I honestly, I was shocked. I didn't, I didn't know what to think, but all of a sudden, like, I just like, it was an automatic, like, yes. And I think it, for me, Coming into UMHB, um, I knew this was a place where I was going to grow my faith. And from the very beginning, I wanted to come here because as a high schooler, my faith was uh, not the best. But um, I believe that UMHB definitely um, had a calling for me uh, to grow my faith. And I knew this was an opportunity where I could do this. Um, And so I said yes and was very excited but also very nervous to uh, like what to expect and how I was going to be um, like a leader and a role model model to uh, other girls on, on campus. And for me, being a leader to girls who are my age or like young, like a little bit younger or o- older was always something very um, like for me, I was very nervous about because I was very insecure if I was going to be a good, good fit to like help them. Um And so when it came to picking my mourners, um, I was trying to go away from the aspect of picking my friends um, because I wanted to pull girls from different aspects of the university. 
um, where they could just um, invite um, different students on campus to either watch Easter pageant or be a part of it as well. And so each of these girls have a different role or leadership on campus um, that is just unique um, in their own way. And so I also tried to like, um, I viewed the mourners, like the actual characters themselves and tried to see like who I could see the, like the girl as, or how they could grow by that certain like mourner. So for instance, like Mary, mother of James, I had no idea who, who that was in the Bible and it doesn't really talk about her that, that much. So in my head, I thought of it as like, okay, well, since she is mentioned in the Bible, like that means that she's obedient to Christ. She was always there. And so in my head, I was like, okay, well, if I don't, like, I know of her. So I thought of like, okay, I wanted to choose someone who I know of, but also know that they're obedient in Christ and that what they're doing on campus is, is good. And they're, um, sharing the gospel with others. And so that helped me like lead up to picking one of my mourners. And she was actually one of the last ones. And the last one is always the hardest because, I, I just remember like being on my sixth one and being like, this is like the person that's going to like finish it all. And I mean, through the process, I did have some people that like um, they were thinking about it, but then they couldn't just because of like their schedule. Um, but I, she, I mean, that, that girl told me she was like, but I do believe that this is something that like, I know I can't do it, but someone else can and that there will be a great impact on Easter pageant. And so that led me to um, choosing all these six girls and I am definitely blessed to have each and every one of them. I'm um, Easter pageant. And from off the bat, like when we had our little surprise dinner, um, they all just got along really well. And that's cause I tried to like, I was like, most of these girls like don't know who each other are, but yet like the moment they met each other, it's like they already knew each other. And so that, that was just, that was a like a blessing to see. And like, if you were to look at everyone now, you would think that they would would have known each other for like years but they've only known each other for like a few months and it's just it's great to see how they've helped each other grow in their faith as well especially with me like I know I'm pouring into them but they're also pouring into me and I've never been surrounded by such loving girls who are on fire for Jesus and they're always so willing to go out to Easter pageant even if like it wasn't our turn to like practice um and it's been such a blessing even getting to like know the disciples as well i know that's one thing that we've been uh trying to work on um is also just getting to know the disciples because i mean the mourners were always there with the disciples in the bible and they were there taking care of them and i i told the girls i was like i want to try to do that i want to incorporate that into this year's easter pageant um and just like be caretakers because that's what jesus did for us and so yeah that's how my experience has been i'm it's crazy how fast it's gone and I mean, it's, it's bittersweet. Um, but I know that like once Easter pageant is done, that me and these girls will, will still be connected and there's no way that they're, they're going to leave. And so I definitely do want to keep in contact with them even afterwards. I still have a semester here, so I know I'll, I'll be here for a little bit uh, with some of the girls, but for those who like are graduating, definitely sad that they're leaving so soon, but yeah, it's been such a blessing just getting to know each and every one of them and pouring into them. And so I still have a few practices left with them, but yeah, I'm enjoying the time I have with them. Yeah, you do. Mm. You have a few left. So I'm glad that you're savoring that. Um, what about you, Dylan? So I'm kind of similar to Tori in finding out about it. I actually missed the phone call and it was a voicemail. So I had some good time to stew on it and be like, what did I do? I thought it <laughs> I was like, and then I remembered something about like, my boss, I remember him telling me that they nominated me for an award, and I was like, okay, maybe it's that or I'm in trouble. And I remember leaving my house to go to the meeting, and one of my good friends is like, yeah, they gave that award out last week. So I was like, okay, trouble then. I'm in trouble. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it was it was crazy. And, like, the ask, I did not have an immediate, like, I, he kind of asked and was like, huh? And I was like, oh, can I think about it? <laughs> and, um I remember I went out to Luther, and this was pretty fresh after Easter pageant had ended. And so I went out to Luther, and I sat at the foot of the cross. And I remember just sitting there like, God, are you sure? <laughs> like, because I, I cannot, like, I remember saying to God, I cannot do this. 
without you. Like, I need you to take the reins on this because this is unlike anything I've ever done. And Easter pageant was ar- already really dear to my heart because I had been in it twice. And just coming out of being a disciple, I know how, I knew how impactful it was and what it, looking up to Nick and how he did it. And so it was like, Lord, I really need you to be the one to lead this if I'm going to do it. And it was just an intense feeling of like, yes. And so I said yes and uh, started praying over the summer because similar to Tori, it was like a, I don't want it to just be Dylan and Dylan's 12 best friends. I want, I want to ask guys who God wants to grow and in different stages of life and different stages of their faith. I just didn't want it to be just me and my 12 friends up there. And so I really wrestled each time a name came up of like, okay, are you just picking this guy because you know that and that's comfortable? Or is this someone the Lord wants to speak to? So fast forward to now, about three of them I knew really well. About two or three of them I had never spoken to before asking them to be a disciple. <laughs> and so there was lots of like, there was a lot of asking the Lord like, are you sure? Because I don't know if this guy even believes in you. And there was a couple instances of that, but the Lord has just been so faithful in like giving me guys that, that he wants to pursue. And me having to realize like I'm not really the one pursuing them I'm not really the one changing their hearts so I don't have to have all the answers I don't have to say all the right things in our meetings it's trusting the Holy Spirit to do the work and when we like came into our first meeting I told them I was like I'm gonna be doing all the same thing because I don't know if everyone knows there's like do like challenges to that are meant to grow the disciples each week and going into that, I actually took them camping for the first one. Mixed reviews on that. But <laughs> we threw them, it was, the intention was to throw them into a different environment. It's not UMHB, you don't have your phone, you're around 12 strangers. That sounds bad. But the intent was to put them in an uncomfortable situation so that they can grow, so that they can get to know each other. So that they kind of establishes that this journey, there won't be growth if you're comfortable. That was the idea behind taking them camping. And it was 32 degrees, so it was very uncomfortable. And um, it was a time. But they all, from the note I've heard, they've all reflected and really enjoyed it. But each of these challenges we do, I also do them. And so it was a lot of taking on the perspective of I'm not leading from the front. I'm leading from beside and doing all the same things you were doing. And each challenge has been trying to build off the other. I have three words that I go back to for everything we do. It's prayerful intentional and personal and so everything we've done is meant to be connected to those and just trying to give these guys things to do that are going to grow them that are things they can reflect on later in life and see like what this taught them about Christ Um, I could go into some of those if you wanted I don't have to but well we have one of the things we have is a prayer journal and that goes back to prayerful where you write your prayers and what you need prayer for it in it and then you pass it to the next guy and you pray for the person who had it prior to you, you write your prayers and pass it on, and they are constantly moving that thing around. So that's something getting us more in our prayer life. They go on prayer walks with, they have groups. They, di- they didn't know it, but they are paired up with the people that they would be paired up in, in the Bible. They didn't know it at the time. I didn't tell them until right before practices started because I wanted them to really just focus on the fact that you're chosen and you're a disciple. It doesn't matter who you are. And, um, yeah, we've just... It's been cool. It's been cool to see these guys push. It's been cool to see myself push. It's it's funny looking at the Bible. You see like the disciples bicker and stuff, and sometimes I look over it, but sometimes I'll see my guys bicker, and I'm like, huh, that's what that was like. <laughs> and you get why Jesus got a little frustrated sometimes. <laughs> but it's just so cool to see like how well Jesus pursued his disciples and how patient he was. I've not always been those things, but it's cool to now, like we've all kind of touched on, you kind of see these characters come to life in a new light. And that's something really special about Easter pageant. And so it's, it's been crazy. It, it doesn't feel real that we're getting close to the end. And so I'm just excited. And I think it's fun to hear that perspective because, you know, if you look at Easter pageant throughout the years, there, there there've been uh, different touches that, that different student leaders have left on it. And I think that's really exciting. Tell me more about what has God done? What has he taught you um, leading up to Wednesday? So for me, um, like I said before, I, this is my first time in Easter pageant. And so I didn't know what to expect, but beforehand, like I was always willing to be a crowds person. 
And whenever um, that would come, like I remember that I only went to one practice, but I also have major social anxiety as well. And I got there. Yeah, <laughs> I got there and there was just so many people. And at the time, my, my boyfriend was a disciple. And so I think that's just it's really cool how all this has happened. But I got there and I was like, I don't know anyone like I can't do this. My friends aren't here. I was like, I, I don't know. I just can't do that. I was like, but I will watch. And so that was the only practice that I went to. Um, but and I always get my excuse of like, oh, I can't be a crowds person either because I'm just too busy with with like school and everything. And I won't have time. And so I would I would just watch. But um, watching it was such a beautiful thing as well. Just getting to see how different it is each and every year and how it impacted each college student that was a part of it or just even watched it. But getting to hear their stories uh, from each um, member that was a part of it was just so be- like it was just so beautiful to hear and how it just impacted each and every one of them. But um, I would say like now having the opportunity to be Mary, I like God just had other like other plans like i i'm pretty sure if i wasn't married this year i would have just watched it again because i would have given my excuse of like oh i'm I'm too busy i can't be a part of it but he said no you're gonna you're gonna be a part of it this year and so that's it but overall it's been it's been a blessing like i've i've loved it so much and um even now i am i am busy but i think he's he's just given me so much peace uh through the the good and bad times that I've been going through uh, this semester with just work and just other like family stuff. Um, but um, the piece that he's given me, like I'm able to just show that to my girls as well. And they, they see that through me. And so it's just a lot of burdens. And that's one of the other things that um, I have my girls doing as well. Like right now um, in my bag was, is a rock. So if you see me carrying a black bag around, there's a big rock in there, uh, basically symbolizing um, our burdens. And I had them write down um, each and every like burden that they have in their life. And we've been carrying that around for two weeks now. Um, and it is at, at first you don't feel the weight of it. But after a while, you're like, yeah, this is getting in my way. But it's meant to symbolize the weight of your burdens and what it's like to carry that on your own and not laying at the feet of jesus and so um this coming up thursday actually we're gonna be releasing that and laying that at the feet of at the cross um and and we'll see what we do with the rock afterwards but might just throw it somewhere (laughs) but (laughs) but just to feel that that weight get left off your shoulders because you're just you're leaving it all at the like at the feet of jesus and i mean the mourners their burden was mourning the fact that jesus was um going to be crucified but yet i like to think of it as the like the empty tomb that is the weight being lifted off because when they found out that he was he was risen then like everyone they celebrated and it was it was just a joyful time for them and so i think overall just peace and having all the burdens like just lifted off has just been something that has been on my heart that i've been trying to share with others and my girls as well so yeah I am still unpacking all the things the Lord is teaching me through this process, <laughs> if I'm being completely transparent. But it's, again, I, I prayed that prayer when I got asked to portray Jesus of like, Lord, if we're going to do this, like, you got to drive the bus. And he's driven the bus. <laughs> and um, in so many ways of like, with how busy life gets, with how many things have been thrown at me this year, trying to figure out what I'm doing after college. Um, again, family things going on, just utter busyness in school and just feeling like I don't have time to pour into these guys. I have time for my relationships, all these things. And um, and I've just learned that the Lord is is faithful in that. He, I'm always in such a hurry, and in this process I've had to learn not to be. And he has had to be my strength through all of this because if I did when days when I didn't lean on him, I couldn't do it. Like I, I wouldn't make it through the day. And so this, this whole thing has just taught me like there's going to be a lot of time that you're not enough and that's okay. And I need to lean on the Lord for these things. I need to lean on the Lord to be my joy today because nothing else feels joyful about it. I need to lean on the Lord to be my peace today because my day is not peaceful. And being in this leadership role is unlike anything I've ever 
experience, like walking down King Street and people being like, Jesus, it's Jesus. It's like, it's a lot. <laughs> You're um, still Dylan. I, You're yeah, still I, Dylan. I, that's what I always say. I'm always like, I'm Dylan, actually. Um, but the Lord's just been so faithful, and he's been my portion is the biggest thing I, I could probably say that I've learned from this is like in my leadership skills, I'm a person that's very unsure of himself and timid to make big decisions, but the Lord's had to be that for me and has had to show me. And I've had to really lean into that through this process. And it hasn't been an easy learning curve. So again, still unpacking all the things, but that's probably my biggest takeaway of the moment is that he, he is enough for me in all my, in all the things and he's got to be my strength for it to work. Thank you guys for sharing that. Um, Becca and Jeff, when you think about your year, can you think of at least one thing that God taught you? Um, it was a really spiritually and emotionally hard year. Like it takes a lot out of you. Um, and I think when you're in a position like that where Satan knows that you're doing good, you get bogged down that much harder and so just learning to like fully release it. So that's really cool. What y'all are doing your rocks, but just learning to release it and give it to him instead of carrying it around. Because I remember like so many like specific things where it was like, God, like, I don't think I can take anything else. Like I'm trying to do this. I have all this stuff going on in my outside life. That was the year, like one of my aunts had gotten diagnosed with cancer. And I was like, I can't take anymore. Like, why are you doing this? And I can remember so many people. So Tiffany mentored me that year and Mike too, being like, you're in like a spiritual place. Like, and it shows that you're like seeking God. And so I can still kind of pull back on some of those experiences now where I have kind of like a keener sense of knowing like what's Satan and what is like just weird stuff happening, you know? And so just being able, I guess, just like the sense of discernment and being able to trust God through all the hard things. So way to go, guys. I think for me, when I when I think back to Easter pageant so long ago, um, yeah, it's just that <laughs> it, it's just that reality of the humbling experience that it is. And, you know, I, I was one of the students chosen to portray Christ, but for everyone involved, it's an experience and it's something that changes you. Still to this day, when I read the scripture passages of Easter pageant, I hear the voices from the track. When I think about and, and, and worship and hear about the cross, I know what it feels like to have that wood on my back, to see people yelling as you come across and drop down into that hole, um, I see the faces of the people when you walk out of that tomb for the first time. And it's just that realization and that awe. And so it's so humbling to, for me, Dr. Bauckham chose me to represent that. Did not feel worthy, did not feel capable. My prayer the whole time was that people wouldn't see me, but that they would see Jesus. Um, but being in the position I'm in now at UMHB, and getting to hear stories. Because here's the reality is Easter pageant is this great story we tell. And, and we tell the story of Jesus. And we get to live it out in front of people. But that story becomes a part of everyone else's story. And so we we had the honor of portraying Jesus and Mary. And you guys will experience that. And it changes you day of. But there's so many other characters. There's so many other people involved. You've got people like Mike McCarthy who have poured into the lives of students for over 20 years and has never been seen on the set, um, but is the glue that holds that and keeps that going. You've got people like James Garcia and the whole team of physical plant guys that if it rains that morning, they dry every seat. They get everything built. If there's something needed, they're there. You've got teams of people at UMHB that just show up and do stuff and never had to be asked. But then you've got lives that are changed from this. I, I can think of stories like um, Nelda, 1954 graduate, who brought her boyfriend at the time to see the Easter pageant. They sat in the bleachers, watched the story. She wasn't sure if he was a Christian and if he knew Jesus. And in that moment, seeing the Easter pageant, he had a life change happen. You've got people like Vicki, um, who's a 70s grad who 
played Pontius Pilate and had to give up Barabbas and turn Jesus over. And her story talks about how when she washed her hands in that moment, it was that realization that how many times do I, Vicky, do this? You've got people like the Roman guard that the script, the set says that you leave once the crosses are down. But one year there was a Roman guard who stayed kneeled at the cross because it it was that moment for him. And so just the life change that happens. And then the community. I mean, there are some years that children have run up and hugged Jesus coming out the tomb. Or I still remember my mom crying when I walked by. And so just the change that happens and the tradition that this is for UMHB, but for our community. I mean, my kids are probably going to be in it this year. And just the change that <laughs> just the change that, that means and just how powerful it is to be a part of sharing Jesus' love with people. Well, I still remember my year, you texting me that night and saying after the, the coloring pages that alumni gives out and that night Jude colored his Mary with red hair. And so just having like this special moments and you have a bunch of random kids ask you for pictures. And like, I remember I was holding Lauren Gentry's baby who was also a redhead and all these kids were like, that's baby Jesus. <laughs> like they thought it was my baby. <laughs> and so just having all those like sweet moments after the show too, because for a lot of kids, especially, I would say like, that's what their image of Jesus and Mary will be for a while. And it's a great conversation starter. I mean, my kids have watched it for years and we bring kids from the community to see it. And it's, it's the moment that it's like, Jesus did that. Mary did that. Like people really yelled at him. And, and so it's this great visual that gets us to be able to carry on those conversations and to lead people to the cross. I think it's also interesting too, because just recently I met um, the first male Jesus and it was Bobby Johnson and he is still around and like he would go to McLean um, and I would go there to play ping pong. And I did not know this, like this whole time I've been coming here ever since freshman year, I've been playing ping pong with him this whole time. And then just recently I crew nights, he was one of the judges and I heard that he was the first male Jesus. And I was like, he's never told me this. And so, uh, one night I went over there to play ping pong with him. And also he, you're never going to beat Bobby Johnson. <laughs> you will never beat Bobby Johnson. That it's impossible. But, um, but he goes in there and he, you just see how he disciples each and every one of those guys that are there. And it's so crazy how much of an impact that he has left, um, on each and every one of those boys that live in McLean as well, especially for me too. Um, but, and then I finally got to tell him, I was like, I was like, I don't know if you know this, but, um, I'm marrying this year's Easter pageant. He was like, Oh my gosh. He's like, you're my mama. And I was like, that was, I just, I started laughing. We were in the middle of a game and I just, I start I threw my paddle down and I just started laughing. But the fact that like he, like he's still around and that he's still willing to just pour into people as well. It's just, it's an amazing like legacy that like y'all, y'all leave behind and it's, it's still going. And so, yeah. I love that. Um, Jeff, you talked about people portraying different roles in the Easter pageant and having life changes from that. Um, what I thought was really interesting is that you guys portray Mary and Jesus in your upperclassmen years. And so um, I know you haven't been in it before, but I wanted to talk about some of the other roles that you guys played before portraying Mary and Jesus. Dylan, can we start with you? Yeah. Okay. So in my three, I've only been here three years. I'm a transfer student. Um, in my first year, I portrayed a Roman guard. And that was my first exposure to Easter pageant. I got here and all the people were raving about it. I wasn't, I didn't know anyone coming here. And so I remember my church group, one of them was involved, was heavily involved in Easter pageant. And actually my leaders were also past disciples. And so they kind of sold me on it. And I was approached by the head of the Roman guard to portray a Roman guard. And I had never done anything like Easter pageant before. I don't really want to call it a play because it doesn't feel like a play, but I had no experience doing anything like that. But I was like, I get to have a sword and wear <laughs> cool armor. It was not as cool as I thought it was going to be. But, um, yeah, it was it was all fun and games until day of. And <laughs> day of, I didn't know the guy portraying Jesus. I barely knew the disciples. But you're the enemy. Like, 
you are the bad guy of the story. You put Christ on the cross, you you kill him. And to really let that sink in of like, Christ loved me while I was his enemy. Like I I have been his enemy. I have been I am the reason he went to that cross. Regardless of if I put it on him on it physically, I am the reason he went to that cross. And really allowing through that role as a Roman guard for that to kind of settle. And it just hit me like a truck. And I, I remember going home that day with my new Easter pageant shirt. I had like fake blood all over me. My face was really red. My hair was crazy. And this guy comes out of his apartment and he's like, are you okay? And I was like, yep. And I went upstairs and cried for a couple hours. But that year was the first time these stories I had heard so many times became real in front of me. And the realization that he did that for me. And then the next year, a guy that was a Roman guard with me, Nick McDaniel, was portraying Jesus. And we weren't close at all. Um, we just did Easter pageant together. And then he approached me to be a disciple. And it was like, whoa, okay. I, I thought about it for a while. And I eventually said yes to him. And it was a 12 strangers. It was He did a great job of picking people like, and 12 strangers and that was just a crazy transformative journey in all that we did together and the, Nick was just a phenomenal leader and he he hit me really hard day of I I made the mistake in the Garden of Gethsemane I portrayed John and so I'm praying in the Garden of Gethsemane and I chose to like actually pray this time and I was like Lord let me feel a fraction of what John felt on this day he delivered <laughs> <laughs> I've never cried that hard in my life they are so they are arresting Nick and right as they're taking him to go away, Nick looks at me and goes, I love you. It's all going to be okay. <sighs> Cried so awfully for the next, I don't know how long, but from going. So I went from being Christ's enemy to him calling me his friend and telling me that he loves me. And what a picture that already was of our journey as Christians of going from he loved you even while you were his enemy. He calls you his friend and he dies for you. Then I get the call next year, and I'm the guy picking up the cross. And so it's been such a crazy three-part journey for me of what I feel like are the transitions of what my faith has been. And so it's been incredible. And I'm, again, still unpacking all the things the Lord's teaching me through it, but it's it's been incredible to build those roles on top of each other. I was Joseph my freshman year and did crowds person. And then the next two years, I was Joseph and a Roman guard. So I had two roles. Um, Joseph's only needed for like the first 90 seconds of the show. Um, so I changed and did Roman Guard. And then for 10 years, I was the assistant director of campus activities. And so I got to work with Mike McCarthy and support it. So at some point, I've stepped in for any role and ha ha have all of them memorized with the way my strange mind works. Um, I was a crowds person my first year and even that was too much spotlight for me. So the next two years I did make up. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, you guys, we are running out of time. Um, I've so loved our conversation though. Um, we always focus on the name of the podcast is into the future. So, um, we've seen the importance of Easter pageant in the past. Why do you guys think this has got to keep going? It's so important. Well, I just, I just think overall it's important that each and every person on this planet should know the gospel. Um, and I think UMHB does a great job of having this opportunity for college students to even portray that story. Um, there, but there's always something like coming to college. I was, I was afraid that I wasn't gonna be able to um, share my faith with anyone. I was just overall afraid of, I guess, being judged. Um, that's kind of what I've dealt with in in high school, but. Um, Coming into college, like UMHB does a great job of letting students just be free with their faith and being confident in it. And with Easter pageant and allowing it to be for not only campus, but for the community as well. It's just a beautiful thing. You could go up to a random stranger and be like, come to Easter pageant and you will see the gospel. Like you like you'll see what happened and what he did for us. But that's just like a portion of what it is. But just even get, getting to see it and s for, I guess, high school students, too, and uh, for youth to see college students be so passionate um, about Easter pageant is already saying something. Um, and so even as an audience member, 
um, getting to see all the emotions through Easter pageant and the moment you see every single student that was a part of uh, the pageant just bow down um, in front of the cross was such a beautiful sight to see. Um, but I think it's important, especially for the younger generation as well, to just get to hear that and see it so that whenever they get older, they could be in in our uh, footsteps as well. I think it's I think it's important just because I've seen how it's moved in people's lives. I mean, with anything, you look at the past and you see how it's impacted people. And I've the stories you hear from anyone, from the people involved to the people that aren't involved, like it's incredible. And in, in God, it's such a testament to how our God speaks to different people in different ways and the ways they need to hear it. Because I can talk to two crowds people and they have two completely different stories. Mm -hmm. And so I think it it has to keep going. I mean. I want it to keep going because I want to see the Lord reaching more and more people. And like you said, like, it's not just the people in the pageant. It's my first year I had a girl come up to me that was, a, she was a child and her dad was with her. They had never heard the gospel before. They didn't go to church. I don't know what brought them to the Easter pageant, but they just started asking me questions. And I got to tell them the gospel and it was like crazy, which they just saw it. So I didn't do much telling, but, <laughs> but it, it has to keep going because the way the Lord uses it to speak to different people in different ways is just so amazing. And so that's been, that's what I think. I think for me, it's, it's the generational impact. Um, you know, we, you, you've got so many people that come back to campus to see it. You've got these grandmothers and great grandmothers that remember what it was like to portray Christ when it was an all-female school. And you've got these kids that were in it that are now college students. Like, I still remember Liam and Noah McCarthy being the boy with the jug. And now they're disciples. And just the impact this has on generations to come. And grateful for the alumni that paved the way and started this tradition and kept it going when there were times of doubt or fear or struggle, um, but who have gone and are so intentional uh, with every moment and aspect of it. And those are the things that alumni and guests don't get to see, but are a part of the change that happens. You get to hear all these different stories and so many different perspectives. And then going to current day, like when we bring kids from Hope House, like they remember that and it shapes the way they look at God because they're actually getting to see this story like acted out in front of them. So they've probably heard this story. They might've read about it, but this is the first time they're like getting to see it. And so I think especially for kids, like it's a really important visual for them to like get a chance. To and that it. it's grown from just being here on campus to now that we live stream it. It's seen around the world. And alumni who can't come back to campus can can log in online and, and see it from whatever country they're in. They can share it with people in that country. And the fact that God has chosen UMHB and has chosen Dylan and Tori to, to lead and to be a part of this team for his gospel to be known is just an amazing thing. And the fact that um, so many students support that, so many alumni support that, and that this is part of what UMHB is about is really special. That's awesome. Thank you guys so much for being on the podcast. Thank y'all so much. Um, to all of our listeners, I know maybe you aren't portraying Mary or Jesus. Um, maybe you're just tuning in, but God has something special for you in his plan. So um, until next time, thanks so much for listening. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Into the Future. We desire that you walk away with encouragement from the stories of hope that you heard today. As you go into your day, remember that the world needs you. You matter and God cares. As Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit.